the male and the female Amen. to have separation. Yes. And way back before Jeremiah, way back before God called the people, he called himself. Amen. And he prophesied right there in chapter 3, the seed of the woman will bruise the head of the serpent. Hello, somebody. So you ain't the one, you ain't the only ones who've gone through split. First Baptist ain't the one who's gone through split. You ain't the ones who've only gone through divorce from your own spouse and what you're talking about. Some of y'all been split from your family for a long time. I want to tell you this, God had to split himself. Is anybody with me? God had to split himself and come down in the form of man, leave this heavenly kingdom and split himself so you can become. And it's because of this appearance of this Jesus in a foreign land that you are now understanding what it means in Jeremiah to become. Yes. And the story is also familiar. I don't want to just give you a slight perspective if I can from that particular passage. This morning you heard about how God said, I will build my church through his son Jesus. Yes. And we learned, oh, where did he go? Oh, where's the man?
because your blessing is not based yeah. on what you own. Yeah. Your blessing is based on who you are. Yeah. And I'm telling you, don't let Deacon Allen fool you with nice clothes. I'm telling you, this man is dressed always to the hip when he comes to Toronto. is not based on what we own, what we possess, how, how much titles we have, it's how we clean pews, it's how we serve God's kingdom, it's how we feed the poor, it's how we feed the hungry, it's how we feed the thirsty, it's when God says in his mercy word that the fact that you've done it to the least of these, you've done it also unto me. Are you looking for opportunities or is it all about yourself? Jesus. Help me understand. I want to leave just four points with you, Jeremiah chapter 4. You've got to understand the context. The people of Israel, the only reason why they were removed from where they were, because they were living in sin. They were disobedient to who the Almighty God was. He fed them in the wilderness. He gave them manna from heaven. Oh my God. He took them to the Red Sea and escaped from Egypt. He showed the God that he was, and yet they crumbled.
And what you are actually, your exiles. But I want to ask you a question right now. In spite of all that, you, that you're talking about, how many of you have actually gone through slavery? Raise your hand.
because of whom I become a rich. Because guess what? There is stored up for me. Yeah. Not just in this temporal life. Yeah. Not just in this small little earthly world we're living in. But I've got an eternity. Yeah. And y'all can come to my backyard. I got a barbecue spread for you when you get to heaven. And I'll tell you this much. My backyard is paved with gold. Yeah. Are yours? Yeah. Well, that's point number one. I want to move on because y'all are going to be here till midnight. Is that right? Isaiah 55 verse 8 to 9 says, if you take your notes, Isaiah 55 verse 8 to 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are as high as the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. It's not about you, it's about the becomer. Yes. And his name is Jesus. Yes. The one who stepped into your place. Yes. So we can have church together. Amen. Look at the person next to you and says, Girl, you are so full of sin. <laughs> Tell the guy next to you, God, you are so full of sin. And, I, and, and just to make sure that, that I'm in the same boat, you all tell me the same thing. <laughs> Because if it wasn't for the cross, if it wasn't for the cross, 175 would mean nothing. Now, before I move on, then let's talk about the next one. If I well, while I move on, if I can, move to the next one. Because when I was a young boy, I wanted to be Superman. I sure did. Oh yeah, I was too. We were too poor to buy a cape. So we had what we call black garbage bags. <laughs> and I would fly like an eagle. In fact, I want to be an eagle one day because I love how eagle soars above the storm. Yeah. That's another message. <laughs> what do you want to become when you grow up? I hope this message reminds you at the end, you should become like Jesus. Yeah. Your only Christian walk is to become like Jesus. Point number two, if I can, in order to become, you've got to know your position, not your past. Amen. You know your past well, but do you know where you are today? Your past can't help you, your past can't come back. They have paid the price, but where are you today? Amen. Ephesians says, you have he quickened who was dead in trespasses and sins. Amen. Verse chapter one, chapter one says this, you are already sitting in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen. Your position is not based on your memory of your past, but much, much of you are living that way because your position is so constrained to your experiences of your four parents that you tend in your mind to live those experiences for yourself. And you've got every opportunity in the 21st century that has allowed you now to rise above your past, to rise above your circumstance, rise above your experience of pain and suffering and slavery. I am a product of slavery too. But I've been long past that. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not going to have the devil play in my mind that slavery was my, is my constraint. It ain't. I rebuke you, devil. And my four parents, they won the battle because we have overcome. Not that we shall overcome, we have overcome. Look at some of y'all looking so pretty in nice clothes, all dressed up with your makeup, pretending that you're not getting old. Right 
clear in his word. In Jeremiah, somebody can find it for me, you can read it for me. But he says, I brought you there. Let me see if I can find it for you. Jeremiah, let me go to Jeremiah. Where is Jeremiah again? Can somebody help me? Is that the New Testament? Just making sure that you all know your word. <laughs> Jeremiah 29. Somewhere in verse 4, you'll see it there. I'm missing my glasses, right? If I can find where it is, where it is, where it is, where it is. Somebody find it for me. Verse 4. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those I carry into exile. I carry into exile. You see, there was slavery going on in, in America. No problem, okay? But God saw you in the future, didn't he? And he saw the opportunity for what? To rise above. Don't stay where you are. Don't stay where you were. He brought you here to rise above. You've got more than what your foreparents had because they paid the price for your freedom, for your happiness. Stop blaming the white man and stop blaming the devil and you take a stand against him because no weapon formed against you is ever going to prosper. You're blaming everybody else but yourself because you failed to get an education. You failed to show love. You failed to embrace God's people. You failed to show grace and you're so worried about yourself, you're missing out on what God is doing. He's going right by you every time and you're missing your opportunity. Amen. I'm not finished yet. I told you earlier today, I get to leave, and it's good luck to Pastor Porter and the rest of their pastors. I get to leave you guys behind. Because I got my own mess to worry about. And to run to. Amen. Amen. What an awesome God we serve. You stay strong and faithful, man. I'm telling you, you're going to rise above no matter yes, what sir. man it takes to yes, you. Sir. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Even in prison, Paul was an overcomer. Amen. Is anybody with me? Amen. God is going to loose those chains on your minds. Amen. God is going to open those prison gates on your minds. Are you hearing me, somebody? I don't care how in prison you might be in your mind. God is going to open them by your faithfulness. It doesn't matter who in chains you. It doesn't matter who imprisons you. They are not bigger than God. He has got the master key. Amen. And he will unlock every, every, every chain of prison confusing you in your mind about your history and your past. It's wonderful. We've got 190 years at First Baptist. So what, I told them. <laughs> Jesus has more history. Yeah. Can I focus a little bit more if you want? Can I talk about this Jesus if I can? He is now preparing the way for us in this word right here. And this is what it says. It says, you've got to know your position. How interesting we tend to look back and blame others, blame our circumstance, blame our current position. If we keep looking back, we'll never move. God is the one who put them in the king in Buchanan's hands. And he took Jeremiah to tell them what their position was. That's where you are. What he says was now, learn the system. Yes. Don't complain yeah, yeah. and don't excuse. Yeah. Look, look. I hate to say this, okay? If you white clog your ears. <laughs> black people, stop being black. <laughs> Learn the system. Learn the laws of the land. Understand the context to where you are when it comes to serving where God has placed you. Serve with dignity. Serve with pride. And stop complaining and blaming and worrying about who's done who what. That ain't the grace and that ain't God. They killed Jesus and what did they do? They brought him and they crucified him and he stood there without uttering a word and all he could say was, Father, yeah. oh, somebody help me now. Who have you forgiven lately? Yeah. You still worry about your brother who hurt you last week and your mother who took somebody's house last week and some property was owned by somebody else and you now in North Preston and you now in East Preston and never shall the two meet. Yeah. <laughs> Honey, start the engine. We gotta leave soon. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 4 verse 22 and 24 says this, that in reference to your 
mind and put on the new self, which is in the likeness of the becomer God. Amen. Put it on. Amen. I know it's important. My mom is 99. are here and we always tease about this. Monk should serve time for the beatings we got. <laughs> sure. But you couldn't ask for a more loving mother. A mother who committed herself to her children. Who lived for her children. And it's only in my 40s when I went to Africa that I learned that I grew up in a single parent home. Go figure that out when you're 40 something years old. My dad abandoned me, so I'm not telling you a story I'm not familiar with. I'm familiar with grief. I'm familiar with absenteeism. I'm familiar with a culture that has been marginalized. I went to Africa to find out that I am an Abuini. You know what an Abuini is in Africa, in Ghana? White man. I almost fell over and died. But my father, who passed away when I was 50, buried him on my 50th birthday, gave me the story. My grandfather is a white Englishman from England. So you see, and most of you here, by the way, anybody here is pure, bled, black? I heard about the Micmacs. Most of you are part of the Micmacs. They're Indians. You fake black people. But y'all are all mixed up with something. <laughs> y'all are still judging everybody. Yeah. Comparing to everybody. Yeah. And that's what we do. I want to say this to you. Compare yourself only to Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Judge yourself only to Jesus. Yeah. Is that alright? Yeah. And he was a man for all peoples. He wasn't just Jew. He was a Gentile. Yeah. He wasn't just Gentile, but he was black. You know why he was black? He called everybody brother. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus came and his own culture, his own culture, detested his acceptance of you and I. Of you and I, folks. Jesus loves you. No matter what you have done, no matter where you have been, know your position because in that position, he's going to take you and rise you above whatever you're going through right now. Know your position. Know your becomer and know your position. Philippians 3, 13 to 14, brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet, but this is what Paul says, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind, I'm reaching forward to what lies ahead, because I press on towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Your position is in Christ Jesus. It's not in your circumstance. It's not in your past. It's not in your racial divide. Your position is much more bigger than that. Walk with your pride of who God is, not your pride of who your parents were. Amen. I'm proud of my mother. She's going to be 100 next year. But she already passed on to me so I can be the man God has called me to be. Amen. When I get to heaven, I can't say, Mama said it. <laughs> I can't get, because my Mama said, I can't get to the pearly gates and says, Peter, Peter, oh, yo, there's my Mama. Mama, she's gonna come and get me. Uh -uh. <laughs> uh -uh. So get over it. Yes. Know your becomer and know your position. Yes. The next one is know, your, know the system. Know the system that you're in. Why? Because the weapons of your warfare, they are not first. That was in Corinthians, isn't it? The weapons are not carnal, but they are mighty to God. The system is designed to keep you down. But if you know what the strategy is, it can't keep you down because you're a child of the king. You can rise above when you understand the system. But you can't understand the system and you can't know until you learn. Amen. 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 And I know most of us from the past and our foreparents 
didn't have the opportunity for learning, fully understanding Pastor Porter, but what you were doing, and my brothers and sisters in your churches, what are you doing now? You are empowering and educating people to rise above the system that controls and confers them to nothing. The school system does not teach you how to succeed, it teaches you how to survive. You've got to learn with God's wisdom how to succeed. And you've got to use the wisdom of this world to confound them with God's strategy of how you can arise above with your education. We empower our youth just like you do, and we challenge them, get your education. My son just finished university as a criminologist last year, and my daughter's in fourth year in Southern Illinois, and that's because we told them you don't have a choice. You're going to go to university, and then you can be a bum all your life. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care if you are an educated bum, at least you've got some education. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Persevered, though they didn't have the opportunities, they have pushed their children, pushed education upon us. Thank you, moms and dads, for your thoughtfulness. Amen. We know it was a struggle. We know you went through hard times. We know you battled, and you wouldn't have gone through slavery picking cotton yourselves. But you also went through hard times. And may we never take the privilege for granted, young people, and for us who are alive today. Your parents paid a heavy price for where you are today. They don't want you looking back and worrying about the past. They want to push you forward so you can bring others with you and rise much more above so this community can become equal to God's design in this kingdom. Yes, yes. Amen? Amen? We are not the tail. Yes. We are the head. Yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. Look at somebody and say, I'm not the tail. Not the tail. I am the head. Am the head. Amen? Yes. I'm wrapping it up real soon if you wouldn't mind. But some of you still are in your position because some of you are still walking around blaming this. And here's the thing. Some of you are walking with too much bitterness. Yeah. Yeah. Judgment. In, some, in fact, I'll tell you as a pastor for eight years, some of, the, some of your own family is bitter against each other. Your bitterness is going to make you betterless. Your bitterness is always going to make you betterless. Learn to forgive. Learn to embrace. I observe. I recognize it. And we are selective in our approach to this grace that we offer to others. It's got to be the same to everybody. It's got to be the same to everybody. And I was asking Pastor Porter, this whole region back in 1842, when the first church got established, we heard about the ones who were birthed from East Preston. It was just called Preston. Mm. And here I am in Toronto, flying into Nova Scotia, and I'm thinking, I'm going to need to take a helicopter to get from East Preston to North. <laughs> a ferry all the way down to Cherry Brook because they are so far apart. Are you hearing me though? Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes. You are so close and yet you are so far apart. Yes. And I'm telling you as an outside observer. Yes. And it's because you're walking around with past baggages. Yes. You're walking around with bitterness and judgment. Yes. Yes. And y'all got to let go and let go. and I'm going to bring all these pastors up yeah. and we're going to turn around and we're going to declare unity back in this community. Yeah. Because you know what? I already sensed it in your leaders. Yeah. These pastors are back on. Mm. We had lunch and we talked about the same plight we have in Toronto. The church is divided. Yeah. And we divide communities. Yeah. And because we divide communities, we divide families. Yes. And because we divide families, we divide individuals. Yes. And when you're not divided, you become separate from God. Amen. Amen. First Baptist, how many of you are here? 34 of you? Yeah. We're going to talk one language, we're going back. Yeah. This is not Preston, East Preston's nonsense. That ain't kingdom story. Yeah. Yeah. That ain't the kingdom. No. Says God, when I get to heaven, is there going to be a North Preston in heaven? 
When I, when I get to the gates, do I go right or left? Because I want to visit Sherry Brooks and I want to see his breasts. But which way do I go, go when I get to heaven? <laughs> We're all in our own church saying, how do you praise God? Yeah. On the surface. But it's time you get deep. Yeah. It's time you build those bridges. Yeah. It's time you start celebrating the whole community. Yeah. If you're going to celebrate East Preston, then celebrate North Preston. Yeah. If you're going to celebrate North Preston, then celebrate Cherry Brooks. Yeah. If you're going to celebrate Cherry Brooks, then celebrate Harvest Place. Yeah. If you're going to celebrate Harvest Place, then celebrate Afroville. Yeah. And if you want to celebrate Afroville, celebrate Nova Scotia. Yeah. And if you want to celebrate Nova Scotia, celebrate Canada. Yeah. And if you want to celebrate Canada, celebrate North America. And if you want to celebrate North America, celebrate the world. Yeah. And if you want to celebrate the world, celebrate the God. But let me move on if I can. But I want to leave up with you when we pray at the end. It's time we have unity yeah. in the community. Yeah. Look at the prayer of Jesus in John chapter 17. Yeah. Go home and read it. Yeah. And see that the world will always laugh at us because they know that we are not one. True. Yeah. And I was so happy. True. I was very pleased, Pastor Porter, that I can drive and be blessed to be in all the communities yeah. together. Yeah. Beautiful community. Beautiful people. Yes. You have it. Yes. Know your becomer. Yes. Know your position. Yes. And know the system to allow you to rise above. Don't let the system divide you. Mm -hmm. Use your education, renew yes. your mind, and become one for the purpose of changing the paradigm yes. of this racial divide. Not just against black and white, but against black yes. and black. Check in Toronto, it's black killing black. Yeah. And don't blame the young boys. Don't blame the children. I blame the parents. And I blame the parents' parents because it's always passed on. Because what you instill in your children is simply picked up. It's time for change. It's time for change. Amen. 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 The last part I want to leave you is this. If you want to become, you've got to trust in the promise. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. If you want to become, you've got to trust in the promise. Amen. God made a serious promise. And the promise wasn't to prosper the way we know it, folks. Because a lot of you like to have nice things, don't you? Yeah, am I right? Yeah, yeah some of y'all got too much nice cars if you ask me, and we don't have nice cars as pastors. No talking about it. And some of y'all got more than one pair of shoes, if you know what I mean. But that's all right, so long as you can know that you can share your shoes with somebody. You understand me? You can have a nice car, but make sure you drive somebody summer with a nice car. It's not all about you. You've got to learn to share. You've got to learn to be one. If you see a brother wanting, you've got to learn to reach out because that's what Jesus has done for all of us. And that promise for all of us is not just prosperity that you hear about on the television and all this rich stuff going on. Prosperity is not about the wealth that you will have. It's about the spiritual health that God gives to you so you can overcome every adversity you face in this life. You check the disciples. You check the apostles. You check the prophets. And you will see how poor they were. Yes. But how rich they were in Christ. Amen. Pastor Lepida, I can mention this because you know it's true. She puts me up in a nice hotel. Me and my wife are having a great time. But I told her, a stable will do. And she knows I wasn't kidding. All this hype and pump, I want to be like Jesus. You all don't understand what I'm talking about. I literally want to walk and talk like Jesus. And I want to be moderate so I can reach people for the gospel. But don't get me wrong, honor is good, and I really appreciate it. And we've had great honor here. You, you all have been wonderful. Not just yourself, but the members and all those who've come with us. You all have treated us such. So it's wonderful. We, we feel, I, what do I tell you now here? I feel like I belong here. 
Amen. I know you all got a first Baptist church in Halifax. Maybe we can have a second Baptist church in Halifax. But know the promise because Jeremiah 29 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you. Listen, God don't just have plans today. You see, that's the fallacy of what we try to figure out now because we figure it's 175 years and our theme is becoming and it's Jeremiah 29. Listen to me. God had plans in the Garden of Eden. Yes, God had plans in 1842. Oh, yes. God had plans today. Amen. And every circumstance you went through was part of God's plan. The same Amen. we are on now is part of God's plan. Yes. And this whole generation is going to pass on and there's going to be another pastor, another generation, and it's still going to be God's plan. Is anybody with me? Yes. Amen? Yes. So don't just rival in your own season and circumstance. Understand you are threading on the shoulders and the backs of a great plan of God way before you your four parents, yeah. way before your four leaders. Yeah. God had a plan. In fact, Christopher Wright in his book says this, God doesn't have a mission for his church. God has a church for his mission. Yeah. The first missionary was Jesus. Yeah. The first missionary was Jesus. And when he showed up, God organized the church yeah. to propagate his gospel when he left. Yeah. But the mission began when man sinned in the garden. The mission is to recapture people back to God himself. Amen. And that's our mission today. And the plan then is not just to prosper because you won't find prosper in this verse in the, in the Aramaic and the Hebrew. The King James you wouldn't find it. In the NIV you will. In the NIV it puts a manly perspective of prosperity. But how it reads in the King James, in fact my, uh, my lieutenant quoted the verse very accurately. I was listening and she didn't say prosper. She didn't. She said the right word. Because what happens is we tend to always think of the earthly successes as opposed to the spiritual successes. And what it says in Jeremiah 29 verse 11 in King James says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an unexpected end. His thoughts are all about you. Just imagine this. In the Garden of Eden, when God spoke to the serpent, he had you on his mind. Yes. Amen. In 2011, uh, sorry, 2017, when he was speaking to that serpent, you see that sin you just caused in my creation? The seed of this woman is going to redeem East Preston United Baptist Church. It's going to redeem Shiloh. Baptist Church. It's going to redeem St. Thomas Church. It's going to redeem New Beginnings Church. It's going to redeem Emmanuel Church. It's going to redeem First Baptist Church. It's going to redeem us from the snare of the enemy. Amen. And that is, if I can say, the plan of God. Let me wrap it up with one last verse for you that I believe is the one that should capture all of us because this one brings it home to all of us, right? And it's taken from 3 John chapter 2. This is what the word says in that verse. It says, I pray you may prosper yes. Yes. based on a condition. Mm -hmm. Prosper even as your soul prospers. Yes. You ain't going to see prosperity in this earthly life if you don't feed your soul. Yes. Amen. You've got to feed your soul. So I think I can wrap it up now and let you know God is on the throne. Amen. Our present day is about God. Amen. East Preston, we celebrate your 175th. Yes. But I want to celebrate your 176th. I love what you have done. But I love what you have told us what you are doing. Amen. 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 And how you are empowering and serving this community, educating people who are willing to be it. I met a sister earlier on today at a very old age, and she's educating herself. Yes. Okay. Get your education. Be empowered so you can be the ambassadors God has called you to be. Amen. Amen. So, you want to become. Well, Christ has come be. Now you can become like him. Amen. That means you've got to know the becoming. You've got to know your position. You've got to know the system. And you've got to trust in the promise. 
Jesus says in John 14, as we say, as we finish off together, I go to prepare a place. That if I go and prepare, I will come again. That's the promise we have. Amen. God bless you. I love the network of the kingdom story. They heard about it in our lunchtime and they were echoing the same sentiments. I know Pastor Wallace is not here, but he was there with us in the lunch. And for the many others in this community, I was going to suggest to you, by the way, I have my leaders here with me. Can we join your association? <laughs> Can you have like an outsider in your association? Well, if you're part of if if you just heard my message, you would know we're part of a kingdom story. We're not just part of a cultural story. Am I right or wrong? So we are part of your story. So we are part of your association. Amen? So now you have 20 churches in your association. You got it? You've got First Baptist Church Toronto in your association. Amen? Because we are part of a kingdom story. Even though you have African United Baptist Association. Don't be exclusive. Let me say it again. Even though you have a title of African United Baptist Association, don't be exclusive. It's not the kingdom story. The fact that you have a female pastor today affirms the gospel story. Galatians 328. There is neither what? Male nor female. Male nor free. Greek nor Gentile. Why? Because we are all one. Amen? We have a story, an earthly story, but the biggest story is the kingdom story. And I know that you guys are united. I sensed it at lunch. There was such a beautiful sense of oneness amongst us. I, I was so honored, yeah? Though your peace, you're all your own peoples. Listen, don't let no church fail. And that is your responsibility, it's yours. You talk too much, you judge too much. If a church splits, pray for God's blessing anyways. It's God's church. No matter how messy we are, when God is looking down, he sees his whole church. And we, and we bragged about it at, at lunch, didn't we? Make Shiloh great. Make New Beginnings great. Make Emmanuel great. Make Cornwallis Street great. Let's get it right, Pastor Gibbs. Make New Beginnings and the next, make it great. Listen to me, let's take this world by storm. Amen. Let's shake Nova Scotia Amen. because of the oneness and pull whoever you can. Amen? Amen. Who's? Carpet Road right here. Make it great. And that means if you have a lot of money and you ain't got much, give to your kingdom story. Build your churches together. Build the kingdom of God because we are pastoring. What did I say the last time? We are pastoring a global community. We are not just pastoring a local church. Our sphere of influence is beyond your church. Your sister has family in far lands. When you empower them, you empower their family. You empower their friends. You empower far lands. You are pastoring a global church for the kingdom of God for Christ's sake. Amen? Yeah, yeah. So don't let the devil constrain you into four walls, into your religious name. You are not just Baptist. Amen. You're not. Let's go back, way back. And you're simply the church that Jesus says, I will be. Amen. Amen. God, I pray as we hold hands yes, Lord. Yes. for this demonstration of unity yes. in your body. Yes. As the called leaders in this assembly, in this local community, we know there are many others of different religions 
and different cultures, but we stand to represent your kingdom today as a model and as an example to all those folks who are here that they themselves will go back and become the oneness you've called them to be, to learn to forgive their past grievances, to get over their bitterness so they will be a better people, Lord, to embrace family who has hurt them, oh God, to, to not be separate by divided North Preston, East Preston, Cherry Brooks, and all of the above. We are one in the bond of Christ. Let love permeate, not just through your leaders, but through his congregants, through his families, through his individuals, through husbands, through wives, through children, oh God. Let the world see that Jesus has come because there is unity in your church. We thank you, O oh God, for every experience, good and bad, for it has shaped us to be who you've called us to be in 2017. And I declare your blessing upon every ministry in this place, from the smallest to the biggest, from the youngest to the oldest. Oh God, I pray your blessing will pour out upon each one, oh God, to fulfill the plans that you have called them to, as we have learned in your word, plans to prosper them and not to harm them. And let your peace reign in each one of us, we pray. Even as we prepare to leave this place, we give you thanks. And God, we turn now and we face the congregation. And for those who need to know you as Lord and Savior, for those who have been renewed in their minds, renewed in their spirits, renewed in their understanding, I pray not just tonight, but now and forevermore, you will grab a hold of what God has said and you will transform yourself for the glory of God. Know who your becomer is and look to him, the only author and finish of your faith. Get over your past and ask God to show you your future. Destiny is yours. Purpose is yours. His plans are for you as well. And God is going to create in you. You. His own purposes to transform lives for his glory. And don't be shy about your people. Love your people. Love them. Amen. Red, yellow, white, black, Trinidadians, Jamaicans. I don't care where they come from. Iraq, Russia, Korea. Let God judge. And you just love people and see the hand of God in this place. I declare a move of God. I declare a move of God in the Preston region from this day forward. Amen. 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 to be seen.